figuring out what our influences were because what we do is so stylized but we, we were listen we were really big Anglophiles when we were young we listened to a lot of early who albums and early move and early kinks and and uh, those are the things we tried to sound like but obviously uh, something went a bit askew Since it's When we first started out, uh, again, the rest of the band looked like rock and roll people, and and it, and it was hard for me because I never looked that way. Plus, I had the the uh, the extra burden of being a keyboard player, and the keyboard player is the lamest person in any band. So I just tried to figure out some way to look and kind of be on stage that was natural to me, and and I became something that was kind of the antithesis of the rest of the people and in the band, and the surprising thing to me was that, that I was getting more attention than a lot of the other people in the band. I mean, Russell still uh, kind of commanded most of the attention just because he moved fast. But, but just by being completely still, I was also able to kind of get a lot of attention. But I always take it as a compliment that I don't look like a person in a band. I mean, who'd want, to, who'd want that? We had made demos really early on, and sent them to every single record company and everyone rejected them and we just as a last a last resort we sent a tape to Todd Rundgren and we just thought well this guy he he looks kind of cool and I don't know his sensibility it seems like that guy would maybe you know relate to what we were doing and we got a phone call back from him saying he wanted to produce us and to sign us to his label Bearsville at the time we had had three albums out when we, were, when we were living in England. This was kind of the third of the series, and we were working with Tony Visconti. We were kind of becoming just bored with the traditional band sound, and we were trying to expand on this. So we told, we told Tony that we wanted to, to do a song that was using a lot of different musical styles within four minutes. And so, so Tony was able to arrange a, a marching band section and a string quartet section but all the while keeping it that it's, that, this, that it's this kind of anthem to something, to getting in, in the swing, whatever that may, might, might mean, you know. And, and you know, he did, he did an amazing job, you know. Tony Visconti is really, really one of the most brilliant uh, producers and, and arrangers in pop music. Get in the swing, pal, get in the swing If I go out, you not come back again Well, thanks a lot Hooray, hooray The night is stronger than the girl who's got the touch But not by much 
people in a way that's not not uh, not in the negative sense but just to kind of provoke I mean we, we want to have a really strong reaction to what to what we're doing musically and uh, both on the records and, and on stage and so from that standpoint we want to be annoying we don't want to be annoying just for the sake the sake of being annoying and, and I think in a certain way sparks is is more subversive than some bands that are maybe seem more overtly angry or, or anti-establishment because I think we're sort of we're kind of doing it in a, in a way that's maybe a little more subtle than just just kind of pure anger but we do want to be annoying in a, in a general in a general sense and I, I think that one thing that we're always aware of just because we do have 18 albums is that most most bands that have been around for a long time the general arc of, of their annoyance factor kind of goes from high to kind of low and they become kind of more mellow and, and less kind of, I, I don't know, just edgy and, and we, we really are always trying to avoid that. We want to, we want to be kind of as edgy as, as, as possible, you know, all the time. Well, with, with our band, there's certain elements, there's certain givens that we have. There's my vocal style and there's his writing style and his lyrical slant. And those are things that we really can't change. So we always have to kind of figure ways to to do our music and and add elements that are uh, borrowed from other areas just to to uh, encase what we're doing in. And so if it's something like in '79 when we we had, had previous to that we'd had more of a traditional band format, and at a certain point we just thought we'd kind of worked enough in that area and we we're trying to decide what could we do to just put our music in another context because it's still going to be my vocals and it's still going to be his lyrical kind of bent and what could we do and we really were fascinated by electronics um, and Donna Summers the I, I feel love we thought that was just an amazing song so we thought it would be just interesting what would happen if you put 
are the elements that we have, the kind of givens into another musical setting. Um, and so we did that album with, with Giorgio and, um, and it just, you know, it was, it w turned out it confused a lot of critics because they thought we, it was blasphemous to be working like, you know, in, in the pejorative sense of disco music. And we never saw it as disco music. We thought it was just putting sparks in another kind of context, a more rhythmic and more danceable sort of context. So in a general sort of way, we always try to find other elements that, that we can uh, utilize within the context of Sparks, but without hopefully lessening any of the personality or the character of the band, because that's the one thing we just really want to retain is just the, the personality. Sometimes people think that humor in, in pop music makes, makes something a novelty somehow, but we, we see humor, we use humor in songs, but a lot of times there's, there's more than one level to, to how we're using the humor. I mean, something like, when do I get to sing my way, say, there, it, it can be taken as, you know, oh, oh in, in, cert, in one kind of way, but it has kind of a, a, a subtext to it, and a lot of people tend to dismiss what we're doing because they think that it's sort of um, a, a funny band in, in some sort of sense, but to us, humor has always been a part of what makes pop music different than other kinds of music, and what attracted us early on to bands like, like The Who was the way that they use film uh, humor in, in their songs to kind of almost be poignant, you know, and, and because humor doesn't have to just be uh, you know, a one-line joke, but it can also add add poignancy to to the to the what you're doing. I just think that that when pop music becomes incredibly serious, 
and introspective, it, it's losing what, what pop music is all about. And so I think there'll always be humor in our, in our music, but, but obviously there's something more than that as well because we never considered ourselves in a, excuse me, a novelty act, choked with emotion, uh, a novelty act. It's a curious thing with, with our situation because we did that album, Gratuitous Sax, in 94, and in particular the album was really successful in Germany where Sparks hadn't had a lot of success before. And we were finding that there's this whole new young audience that was the same age coming to see us play that had come to see us play in 1974. They were 15 year old kids coming and now 20 years later we had another hit in Germany and there were the same 15 year old kids coming to see this band that was now actually 20 years older but there was something and there seems to always be the situation where there's something within the music that we're doing within the image of the band within how we're presented on TV or with videos that has an appeal sometimes to a really young audience I think it's just this thing of us not ever wanting to kind of grow up and be mature like you're supposed to do at this point in one's career. I just read a quote, we did a, a, an interview in Germany recently and someone said they just interviewed XTC and they said that at this point in their career they're concerned with doing um, 
qu something quality adult pop music and and we just kind of cringed at, at the thing of them you know saying that it they wanted to do something adult you know that it seems like at the point that in just by being in a pop band when you when you use the word adult that that is kind of the end that you're now in the point of your career where you're becoming reflective and and um doing all the things that are just the antithesis of what pop music is supposed to be that it's not supposed to be adult it's supposed to be you know it's it's young it's brash and um provocative and so that quote i was just really it's kind of sad to to hear that that now they're saying they they want to you know do adult pop uh and i just think it's you know that's sort of a shame and i think that that for us we just um, maybe we're living in some other kind of dream world, but we just don't ever see ourselves as kind of growing up and, and maturing, that we're going to continually be uh, an immature band. It's the calm before the storm Something big is coming soon Something that will change your do. Dogs are living horsemen come and go The muscle cars are driving way too slow And everybody's walking on tiptoe For every yes a hundred no's The kind of day when nothing hits the fan The kind of day when nothing's in demand The kind of day when music means show Something big is coming soon Something that will change your doom And everybody's talk is monotone And everybody's look is monochrome And everybody's life has been postponed Ocean doesn't feel like making waves. There's no one that the life God needs to save. And no one's in the mood for feeling brave. We'll well behave, so well behave. It's the calm before the storm. Something big is coming soon. Something that will change your doom. It's the calm before the storm. of security shown to be a forgery It's the calm before the storm The calm before the storm It's the calm before the storm It's the calm before the storm When we have disagreements it's usually about specifics like the sound of a kick drum in a song or something real specific musically but in a general kind of way as far as the uh, you know our lifestyles and that sort of thing we we get along really well and I think that's one element that's kind of kept the stability of the band there is that we do get along well and we both have a common kind of vision for what Sparks is and what Sparks should be doing and uh, Neither of us, neither of us, have met uh, Patsy Kenzett, so we, uh, you know, we have a dispute there. <laughs>